Hello and welcome back to Civil Engineering with Amir. In this video, we're going to solve another example from Hippler's structural analysis on the topic of shear force and bending moment. So we have an overhanging beam with a total length of 14 feet, a roller support at point A, which is located at a distance 4 feet from the left end, and a pin support at point B, which is located at a distance 4 feet from the right end. They have a point load of 250 pounds at each end of the beam and a uniformly distributed load or a rectangular load with a magnitude of 150 pounds per feet between the two supports. All right, let's start solving the question together. The first step in solving these type of questions is drawing the free body diagram of the beam. So if this is our beam, this is point A, this is point B, we call this point C, and this one point D. This is four feet, this is also four feet, this is six feet. We have a point load of 250 pounds here, another one here, and a distributed load with a magnitude of 150. Point A is a roller support, so we only have AY. Point B is a pin support, we have BY and BX. And now the next step would be writing the equations of equilibrium for this free body diagram and determining these three support reactions. And in order to do that, we should first substitute this distributed load with a single resultant force which is applied at the centroid of our distributed load. So the magnitude of the resultant force will be the area under the distributed load or 150 multiplied by 6 which will be 900 pounds and it will be applied at the centroid of this rectangle or in the middle of this 6 feet length. So we can substitute this free body diagram with this one here. Now in the x direction we only have bx, so bx will be equal to zero. In the y direction, we have negative 250 plus ay minus 900 plus by minus 250 equal to zero. So ay plus by will be 1400 pounds. Now we can write sigma m around any point along the beam. We can choose point A, for example, equal to zero. Choose this direction as the positive direction. So 250 multiplied by 4 feet minus 900 multiplied by 3 feet plus by multiplied by 6 feet. minus 250 multiplied by 10 feet will be equal to zero. And this will give us a BY equal to 700 pounds. And now if we put this BY in this equation, we have AY plus 700 equal to 1400. So AY will also be equal to 700 pounds. Instead of writing this equation of equilibrium for the moments. We could also use the symmetry in the beam. So Bx is equal to zero and the beam is symmetric in both loadings and geometry. So Ay will be equal to By. And using this equation, we could say Ay plus Ay where 2Ay is equal to 1400. So Ay and By will both be equal to 700 pounds. And now we can substitute these support reactions with the values that we found here. I'm just going to copy this diagram. Bx was equal to zero. By and Ay are both 700 pounds. And now the third step, we'll be cutting the beam at different sections and drawing the free body diagrams for each section. So the first section is between Point C and A, we cut the beam at a distance x, and x is between 0 to 4, 
The second section would be between point A and B. So we cut the beam at a distance X from the left end and X is between six to 10. And the last section would be between point B and D. So we cut the beam at a distance X from the left end and X is between 10 to 14. And for each cut section, we're going to have two cut segments. So for cut section one, or x between 0 to 4. This is our cut section at distance x. So our left cut segment will look like this. This is distance x from the left end. We have v1x downward and we have m1x counterclockwise. And our right cut segment will look like this. So the total length of our beam is 14 feet. We cut the beam at a distance X. So the length of this segment will be the total length or 14 minus this X. So this length is 14 minus X. This is 10. So this length will be 14 minus X minus 10 or four minus X. We have V one X upward and M1X clockwise. For the second cut section, or X between four to 10, we cut the beam somewhere between point A and B. So our left cut segment will look like this. This is distance X. So this is X and this will be X minus four. We have V two X downward and we have M two X counterclockwise. And the right cut segment will look like this. So again, the total length of the beam was 14 feet. We cut the beam at the distance X from the left end. So the length of the left cut segment was X. And the length of the right cut segment will be the total length or 14 minus X. 14 minus X minus four will be 10 minus X. We have V2 upward and M2 clockwise. And finally, for the third cut section, or X between 10 to 14, we cut the beam somewhere between point B and D. So our left cut segment will look like this. The length of the left cut segment will be X. So the length of this piece will be X minus 10. We have V3 downward and M3 counterclockwise. And the right cut segment will look like this. The length of the left cut segment was X. The total length was 14. So this will be 14 minus X. We have V3 upward and we have M3 clockwise. So again, we had three cut section and for each cut section, we have two cut segments. And in the next step or step four, we have to choose one of the two cut segments and write the equations of equilibrium for that cut segment and determine their corresponding V and M. So step four is writing the equations of equilibrium for any of the cut segments of each cut section and determining their V and M. For cut section one or X between zero to four, I'm gonna choose the left cut segment. It seems a lot easier to analyze than this one. For the second cut section, they look pretty much the same. So I'm gonna stick to the left cut segment. And for the cut section three, I'm gonna choose the right cut segment. I will keep the ones that I chose and remove the other ones. So, for the first cut segment, if we write sigma fy equal to zero in this direction, 
they have negative 250 minus V1 equal to zero. So V1X will be equal to negative 250 pounds. If you write sigma M around any point along this segment, you can choose this point O equal to zero. This direction is a positive direction. 250 multiplied by X plus M1 will be equal to zero. So M1X will be equal to negative 250X. Similarly, for the second cut section, we have to write the equations of equilibrium. But since we have a distributed load here, we should first substitute this distributed load with a single resultant force. So the magnitude is 150, the length is x minus 4. So the area under this distributed load will be 150 multiplied by x minus 4. And that resultant force will be applied in the middle of this rectangle, or x minus 4 divided by 2. So this free body diagram can be substituted by this one here. So again, the magnitude of our resultant force is 150 multiplied by x minus 4, and it will be applied in the middle of this x minus 4 or x minus 4 divided by 2. So I'm just going to remove this one. Now, if you write sigma fy equal to 0, we have negative 250 plus 700 minus this one, or 150 multiplied by x minus 4, minus v2 equal to 0. So v2x will be equal to negative 150x plus 1050. If we write sigma m around this point O, this direction, we have 250 multiplied by this distance, or x, minus 700 multiplied by x minus 4 plus 150 multiplied by x minus 4 multiplied by x minus 4 divided by 2 plus this m2 is equal to 0 and this will give us an m2x equal to negative 75x in a power of 2 plus 1050x minus 4,000. And finally, for the last cut section, if we write sigma fy equal to zero, we have v3 minus 250 equal to zero. So v3 will be equal to 250 pound. If we write sigma m around this point O equal to zero, this direction, we have m3 plus 250 multiplied by this distance is equal to zero. So M3 will be equal to 250x minus 3500. So for each section, by writing the equations of equilibrium for one of the cut segments of that cut section, we were able to determine their V and M. And now we can summarize these results here. And using these functions, we will be able to determine the shear force and bending moment at any point along the beam. All right, now let's draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams for our overhanging beam. Okay, so for the shear force, we have a negative 250 pounds point load at x equal to zero. So we have to go down. From zero to four, the shear force will be constant. And this is negative 250. At x equal to four, we have a positive support reaction with a magnitude of 700. So 700 minus this 250 will be 450. So we have to go up. So this is 450. From 4 to 10, we have a linear function for our shear force with a negative slope. And it will look like this. This will be negative 450. At x equal to 10, we have a positive support reaction equal to 700 pounds. So 700 minus this 450 will be equal to positive 250. From 10 to 14, our shear force will be constant equal to 250. So this is 250. And at x equal to 14, we have a negative point load with a magnitude of 250. So negative 250 plus this 250 
will bring us back to shear force equal to zero. So this is how your shear force diagram will look like for this overhanging beam. For the moment diagram, at x equal to zero, it's a free end with no moments, so m will be equal to zero. From zero to four, we have a linear function with a negative slope. So if we look something like this, this will be negative 1000. From four to 10, we have a quadratic function for our moment. And since our shear force was equal to zero at this point, we're in the middle of the beam. If we put this seven in this equation, we're gonna get a moment equal to negative 325. So somewhere around here. And now if we draw this function, we're gonna have something like this. This is also negative 1000. And from 10 to 14, again, we have a linear function, but this time with a positive slope. So it looks something like this. And at x equal to 14, similar to x equal to zero, it's a free end with no moments. So m will be equal to zero. This was negative 325. And this will be how your moment diagram will look like. I've also plotted the shear force and bending moment diagrams in MATLAB, just so you can see the more precise versions of our hand-drawn diagrams. That's it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you liked this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. If you have any comments, suggestions, or feedback, feel free to write for us in the comment section. And finally, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please support us by hitting the subscribe button on the right corner. Thanks again and see you in the next video.